President Obama and I believe that the subjugation of women is a threat to the national security of the United States. It is also a threat to the common security of our world because the suffering and denial of the rights of women and the instability of nations go hand in hand. That was U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton highlighting the link between women's rights and global security. Clinton herself, a former presidential candidate and senator, is a vivid example of what women can achieve here in the United States. But activists say that the struggle for equality is far from over. And joining me now is Louise Vance, director of a provocative new documentary, Seneca Falls, and Marie Wilson, founder of the White House Project to empower women in business and politics. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. That was quite a powerful statement Absolutely. made by Hillary Clinton. Is it really a matter of, of national and global security? I couldn't agree more. I mean, the only way I think we are going to change what has corrupted us financially and what keeps us in wars in this world is to get a diverse and critical mass of women into leadership alongside men. Which is your project, which Absolutely. is, which is the, the, the mission of your work. I'm going to ask you, Louise, you've just made a provocative new film which is airing on PBS right now called Seneca Falls. Why? We're going to show a clip of it, but I want to know what the motivation was and what message you were trying to get across. understand that without the, women, the work of all these women that you wouldn't be able to do what you're able to do now in your of life? Of course, but it's like the thing about me and like this whole feminist movement mm -hmm. thing is like everyone, it seems like everyone's dwelling so much on the fact that we couldn't do this and we couldn't do that. But I look at it as, well, now we can, you know, and those women made it possible. And so be thankful and get over it. Be thankful and get over it. This whole feminist thing, says that young girl. I mean, that's fairly extraordinary, or is that common now amongst young, young women now? I think what's common is that women uh, of all ages, but particularly young women, have no idea that the condition of women 150 years ago in this country was um, really akin to slavery. Um, women had no rights. They, they were banned from college. They didn't own their wages. They couldn't sit on a jury. They couldn't hold public office. They were really in a condition that um, is hard to describe or even conceive of today. So we're not taught that in school, and that was the reason for making this film. It's not in our national consciousness. It's not in our collective memory. And as one of the young women says, um, not the one who was complaining, but another one said, you know, knowing your history gives you courage. Mm -hmm. it, it lets you know that you can change the world. But it is extraordinary as you try to lobby and work for, for equal rights and parity across the board that the young women of today who are the movers and shakers and the leaders of today think that the fight is all over. Well, I just want to bring one contradiction into it. And I agree that um, unlike us who hope made it possible, they see it as possible. And so that's good. But what's really happening, Christiane, that is so amazing is our work in terms of attracting a diversity of young women to come and run for office is the most powerful work I've ever seen. For every hundred women we have in the room training them to run, there are 40 now outside waiting, and they are 40 to 50 percent women of different racial and ethnic groups, and 75 percent under 35, which is what you have to be to get to the top. So somewhere, Hillary Clinton, Obama, something has planted a different seed. Well, let me let me play a, a quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Justice on the Supreme Court, about the issue of women's rights being enshrined in the Constitution. She has basically said that every modern Constitution, every Constitution written since the World War II era includes a provision that men and women are citizens of equal stature. Ours does not, she says, meaning the United States yeah. Constitution. Is that the aim of your film, among others, to, to teach young girls what they still need to fight for? Well, I think the aim is to see where we've come from and then to say, what needs doing? Um, we don't have an equal rights amendment, and we're one of the few nations that has not signed CEDAW, which is, this is a, a, a declaration the of convention. Uh, yeah. the Convention to End Discrimination mm -hmm. Against Women. Um, it's a worldwide uh, document that has not been signed by the United States. So we are lagging behind in the United States despite all the freedoms that we appear to have. Does it make a difference materially 
in all the projects of women's empowerment not to have it enshrined in the Constitution? Is that something that modern day women and activists like yourself... Oh, why are we 71st in the world in women's political representation? 71st? 71st in the world out of 189 mm -hmm. countries because we won't do things like conventions and quotas. If we would actually ratify the convention to eliminate all forms of discrimination against women, we would have more women rising into leadership in every sector of American society. So what are the biggest barriers right now to that kind of equality? I mean, you as you were doing this film. Well, I don't think that if you, if you don't see your place uh, in history, and you constantly see in the public discourse, you see women on the sidelines, women in the margins, and it's unusual for a woman to run for president or, or, or be elected to high office. I just think that young women growing up do not see themselves in this mirror. They don't, they don't conceive that they can uh, enact change. But you know, when you go back and you look at history, it's often shaped by these small acts of courage. So a couple of people get together, like they did in Seneca Falls, and they ran a newspaper ad. 300 people showed up, and they had a public meeting. And from there, they started a movement that freed half of this country. So people don't see that they have the ability to, to create change. It's sometimes for me extraordinary because I've traveled the world in my work and I see many, many women elected to the highest office all over the world, even in, in areas that the United States, you know, still is saying needs to, to be more developed. Yet exactly. on women's issues, they're quite developed. Do you find that odd as, you know, an American in the most developed democracy in the world that you're so far behind many For other countries? For 10 years working on the issue of women's leadership, I find it so odd. But I have run into this whole business about the, the, the cultural ideal of women, Christiane, is still wife and mother in the United mm -hmm. States. So we have to do something about how women actually can mm -hmm. do both. But most of all, I want to tack on to courage. Because what everybody who's watching this show could do as an act of encouragement is to actually call a young woman today and say, I saw a show, and I want to invite you to lead in this country. I want you to actually think about being on a school board. I just think you're terrific because the invitation factor is amazing. It, the courage to do that is extraordinary. And the last word, Louise Vance, what do you hope that your film will inspire? Courage. Um, the, the knowledge that women can come together with men, women can jointly look at the problems that face That's the world, true. they can enter into the conversation, they can enter into business and politics and, and all of those realms and really make a contribution. Let's have everybody's ideas. We have a lot of solve, uh, things to solve. So. It's a lovely film. It's a lovely <laughs> Looking film. forward to seeing it Thank on you. PBS this month. Thank yeah. you so much, both of you, for joining us.